Hello everyone and welcome to the long awaited next episode of Marcel Plays RCT. Today we're tackling the fourth scenario from Rollercoaster Tycoon 1, Diamond Heights. The goal is to get a park value of at least 200,000 at the end of year 3 and it is the first scenario where you start with a proper park already there. There are 4 roller coasters including the 2 iconic dueling ones for which I have big plans, a log flume, a merry go round, a spiral slide, a miniature railway, some staff but weirdly enough no stalls and the path network isn't great either. So the first thing that we'll do after running all the ads is add some necessary path connections and build some stalls. While I'm doing that let me answer the question that a lot of you will have. Didn't you do this one already? Yes I did and it was nearly the death of the series. I did a completely optimized challenge where I got 10 million park value which was nothing like the previous 3 episodes and a lot of people understandably didn't like it. I did it that way because I had no idea what to do for diamond height so I took the easy way out and did something I was familiar with. It gave me a lot to think about and eventually I decided to take that video out of the series and redo diamond heights in a more proper way. The video is still up but as a normal challenge video instead of as a Marcel Place RCT video. Now that the park is fixed up it's time to start building some rides, starting with something we've all built as kids, two synchronized shuttle loops. Except I forgot to turn on synchronization and didn't realize it until 2 hours later. These two might look like they have the same color scheme but they actually don't. The one in the back has colors we all know and love, but the one in the front only has new colors. Wait, new colors? Yes, very recently OpenRCT2 has increased the number of available colors from 32 to 54. This ride in particular uses violet, pastel orange, forest green, deep water and army green. This is a great addition and if you want to learn more then I recommend this video by Dirklink. You should subscribe to him as well as he very often makes videos like this about new features in OpenRCT2. Even though the park already has a merry go round I still want to build my own. Since pretty much all the available land is very hilly I'll build it on water instead and surround it with fountains and statues of dolphins. This gives you the amazing illusion of riding epic water horses to the end of the world. Another classic flat ride that I want to build is a haunted mansion but I definitely don't want to build this one on water. So I'm going to flatten a portion of this hill so that it fits nicely on the top and doesn't have any of those ugly supports. A classic theme for a haunted mansion is a haunted hill with all kinds of scary trees so that's what we're going to build here. To make the hill look even better I have changed the ground texture to go from grass to dirty grass to dirt to stone. The hill is now a nice centerpiece to the park which is fitting as the path that leads to the two main coasters of the park goes over this hill. I'm thinking it would be nice to have another ride interweaving with the log flume on the side of this hill which is an ideal spot for a car ride. Wouldn't it be nice to drive along this track, see people on the log flume and enjoy the view? Guests certainly think so as the ride is quite popular. The color of the track here by the way is sepia which is another new color. Earlier I mentioned that the hill that I built the haunted house on was kind of unfit for building on without altering it but this other hill is even worse. The only buildable land is taken up by the railroad and it is kind of in the way of anything else. This time I'm just going to remove the entire top part of the hill and lower the railway down with it. Now there is plenty of space to build a flat ride and a second wooden wild mouse coaster. I thought this area would look nice as an old abandoned mining hill. We can even tell the story that the hill was actually much taller before and it was excavated after some rare ores were found in the area. 
The wild mouse initially had some excessive lateral g-forces but a quick extra hill at the bottom of the drop cleared those away easily. And this is the final mountain. I'm particularly happy with the train that goes half through it instead of just sitting on top of it. Trains can't really go up and down hills very well so this is much more realistic. Guests have been complaining about long queue lines and I noticed that this massive railway that goes around the entire park only has two trains. Come on guys, this isn't efficient at all, especially since the track is long enough to support up to 8 trains. The same goes for the long flume. Sure, we could keep the 9 boats it currently has, or we could massively increase the throughput by giving it 30 boats, making sure that the guests don't have to wait more than a few minutes. The time has come to do something about these ugly paths on the water. To give the peeps something nice to look at, I'll make a little island and fill it with flower beds. I have decided to creatively call it Flower Bed Island. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Here I'm again using a new color. The red flowers are accompanied by lavender ones. And why not build a second island as well, this time one with two ferris wheels. I am an absolute sucker for neatly organized trees and bushes in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, so that's what I'm going to do here. The fountains are like the minarets on the corners of mosques and fully complete the look. Things like these are what I spent most of my childhood building. I didn't build crazy coasters or other similar things much, I built mostly calm well organized garden like parks that looked similar to this. After having built a fairly standard spinning wild mouse on another of the many hills in the park, it's time to build our first proper big coaster of the video in the form of a classic wooden coaster. After an initial 37 meter drop that takes you underground and gives a top speed of over 100 km per hour, it meanders all over the hill and does what a wooden coaster does best, look very cool. The color scheme is not so amazing though and the hill definitely needs some trees, so let's work on that. After a bit of decorating this is the final design and I really like how it turned out. The Bordeaux red works particularly well with the dark brown color of the supports and the water and purple color trains fit in well too. We're roughly halfway to the deadline so we really need to get started on the big project. Getting the dueling looping coasters Agoraphobia and Claustrophobia to 10 excitement. To do this we need to destroy a large part of the coasters as the current layout simply won't work as they are way too short. We're gonna need a much taller chain lift so that the rides can be much longer. It was quite tricky to get them to synchronize after the first drop as there is a turn in it, but eventually I figured it out. The black one has a longer way to travel, but with one booster at the top set to 14 km per hour it will reach a slightly higher top speed, so by the time they reach the first loop they will be pretty much even. After the loop they go their own way for a little bit. Agoraphobia does a further two vertical loops followed by a helix before turning back. Meanwhile Claustrophobia traverses a big curved hill before doing its own two vertical loops followed by a helix as well. After that they meet up and perform synchronized interlocking vertical loops and let me tell you it wasn't easy to get these lined up perfectly. It involved a whole lot of changing one track a little bit, seeing if that fixed it, being disappointed and changing it some more, but eventually I got it right and it looks really satisfying. After this they once again go off on their own, like the big strong independent looping coasters they are, before meeting up for a final synchronized vertical loop. If you thought the last synchronization effort was painful, well this one was even worse. It took so many changes to make the track look good while at the same time keeping down the number of drops so that the rides don't become too intense. The intensity rating of the looping coaster may be fairly low, but 5 inversions and almost 20 drops will do a number on any coaster type. I've kept the end of the coasters the same, except for the addition of one helix right before the station of Agoraphobia. 
it was too short and this is a good way to add a little bit of length so that the rides finish very close together. Now we can finally test them and they both turn out to be just a bit too intense. No problem, we can easily remove a few drops, but since we want to keep them synchronized it's not as easy as it would have been with just a single coaster. Eventually I do manage to bring the intensity rating down below 10, but this doesn't mean we're done yet. Their excitement ratings are pretty high at 9 and 9.6, but that's not quite 10. Especially Agoraphobia is going to need a lot of decorations to get it there. I could do this the way I usually do by just adding random floating bits of path, but that's ugly and not in the spirit of this series. Luckily we don't need to do that, as we can fairly easily build an actually usable path that still provides head chopper bonuses. And here I can do the same with the queue lines. It may look like just some normal queue lines, but they were specifically crafted to give extra excitement bonuses. I also built some dummy path underground for even more bonuses. This is a little bit cheaty, but I think it's fine, as they are entirely invisible. The reason Claustrophobia's excitement rating is so much higher than Agoraphobia's is partly because it goes underground and gets an excitement boost from that. To solve this I put half of the final helix on Agoraphobia underground, which caused it to have over 10 intensity on the retest. In order to get it below 10 again I had to remove all the path bonuses as they give intensity if you place them before the stats are calculated, but not if you place them afterwards. After a lot of tinkering, these are the final designs including all decorations. Agoraphobia reaches 10.06 excitement while Claustrophobia tops that at a slightly higher 10.31 excitement, putting it in the extreme category. The deadline is rapidly approaching, but we're not quite done yet. There is a little bit of time left to build another shopping area and, more importantly, place down my favorite scenery item in the entire game. I don't know what it is, but I just really, really like this Roman temple thingy. And with that we beat the scenario with over 4000 guests and a park value of about 280,000 euros, which is actually not that high. I didn't pay any attention to the goal while playing, so if I was about to fail it I would have had no idea, but luckily we made it. This is the final park and I'm really happy with it. I hope you enjoyed this episode as well and let me know what you think in the comments below. To see the previous episode of Marcel Plays RCT you can click right here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.